Hello and welcome to The Lou Review. I'm your host, Rosa Hart, and today I get to interview the Flavor Queen, Janine Washley. Thank you for being here today, Your Majesty. <laughs> oh, let me adjust my crown real quick. Um, As she adjusts her glasses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so cute. It's, um, and I just figured out that Janine, the Flavor Queen, totally rhymes yes. and now I just can't get that out of my oh head my goodness, at all. You've never noticed that I never before? noticed it. No. Wow. <laughs> you might have a whole new catchphrase. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So how did you become the flavor queen, Jenny? Well, actually, um, I was on the Food Network. There was a show. Okay. It only lasted two seasons. It was called Bakers versus Fakers. <gasps> Oh, Did wow. you see it? No, but that's just so <laughs> exciting. You yes. got to be on TV as a baker. Yes. Okay. Well, I actually Before was a faker. Was a perfe- so you were a it faker? was yes, I was um I did not have the kitchen yet. And oh. so I was the faker. So the premise of the show was there were two professional bakers and then there were two home cooks and we were the fakers. And um oh. so uh yeah. Did they know who was who? No. No. So the judges were no, not they did pre-informed. Not no. You had to prove it yourself and they had to guess. Yes. I and, love the secrecy. Oh, yeah. And the entire time while, you know, we were competing against each other, mm-hmm. I because I just tuned into the judge, you know, I was mm-hmm. curious. Mm-hmm. And they were doing this thing with, oh, that was a pro move. Janine just did a pro move. Janine, you know, mm-hmm. or, okay. um, you know, or the person beside of me, mm-hmm. that was a pro move. And, and and then I'm just kind of giggling inside because it's like, I'm the faker, but they think I'm doing a pro and move. Were you, par- you said you were paired up with another faker? Yes, right? there were two fakers. And so then the two pros were actually together? Mm-hmm. Oh, that is so yeah, tricky. Was, I love that. That was, it was so good. Um, and I knew who, we, we knew who the bakers and the fakers were. Sure. You know, because yeah. we were in the, um, like a green room type of situation, you know, waiting off camera and, um. So, yeah, so that's how that went down. Um, And there was a judge on there, and he um, loved my flavor combinations. Mm -hmm. The first dish, um, the the name of the segment, it's um, season two, and and the segment's name is um, Cream Puff Tough. Okay, well, I'm, I know what I'm watching after this. Yeah. Is, it, is it on Netflix? You can still, well, it's YouTube? not that, it's, um, I'm not sure if it's on YouTube, but it's on like a Disney, not Disney, oh shoot, um. I'll probably have a lot to of Google Disney. It. It's it's whatever channel um, Buddy um, Velastro, whatever okay. channel he runs, you know where all of his stuff is. Okay, he he, he has it on that channel. Okay, well, so I'm gonna Discovery. Have to... That's it. Discovery. Discovery. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I will definitely be looking that up tonight because now oh, I have to so watch fun. you do some cream puff, <laughs> cream puff tough. Yeah, cream puff tough. Okay. And I did a, I poached the pineapple in ginger. Oh, like a ginger syrup. And he said, I, I don't know why I never thought about combining ginger and pineapple. Right. So, Is that something um, you'd ever done before that day? No. No. Well, okay. So I'll give you some inside scoop on this. Yeah. Um, I knew beforehand what the segment was like they'll tell the contestants you know this is this is kind of how it's going to go down so kind of have a plan in your Mm -hmm. head so they sort of prep you so you're not just standing there going I can't do this I've just got a mental block or Mm -hmm. whatever so they give you some guidelines some you know insight formulate a plan you got it and then Sherry Yard who is a James Beard winning Mm. pastry chef and Mm -hmm. has a pastry shop in New York probably has multiple ones (laughs) um she said that I could that she would take my cream puffs in her shop anytime so to me like that was totally worth anything (laughs) but um this uh this um judge and he's the one who invented pie cakin so pie pie cakin is um well you cut into a cake and there's a whole pie in it well, my goodness. Yes. And his name is slipping me, but if you Google um, Pie Cakin, mm-hmm. you will see his name. And uh, so anyway, and, and he's very, um, he's just got a wonderful dry wit. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's, you know, just um, joking around. And he said, you know what you are? You're the flavor queen. Oh, my and goodness. I'm like, and so I just kind of <laughs> giggled and I'm like, oh, that's funny. Yeah. And, um, and then the, so I made it through to the second round wow. and, and then I did a hibiscus pineapple upside down cake. So <gasps> that, 
it was beautiful. The color was this, you know, really intense, um, like fuchsia, like a really deep pink color Throughout because, whole, like, cake and everything? yes, wow. because I ground the hibiscus, uh, petals wow. the dried hibiscus tea mm -hmm. you know the petals mm -hmm. of the flower and um incorporated that into my batter and wow. it was just intense so, i want to see that just because it sounds beautiful oh it was wow. really really pretty but i had a fail so oh, no. i was having a really hard time um making the caramel and i just didn't have enough time to get the caramel up to the proper mm -hmm. temperature so the the whole premise was um i would flip the cake out of the cast iron pan mm -hmm. and then I on the side would have created a caramel cage and then I put the caramel cage on top of the cake wow. so it was just you know it was like this beautiful kind of like elegant mm -hmm. yet rustic which I love that whole high low thing yeah, I yeah. do that a lot mm -hmm. and um I achieved the cage mm -hmm. I put it on top so you you know just mm -hmm. briefly you see it in mm -hmm. its full glory mm -hmm. But because the temperature of the caramel wasn't perfect, it collapsed. Oh, so no. yes, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It made great TV. I bet it, it did. did. <laughs> you know, and one of the two, and I think it, it was the uh, the the male judge. He mm -hmm. said, "Have you ever heard of the movie Snakes on a Plane?" And mm -hmm. I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> and he said, "This is like you know." caramel on a cake because it was it was just all if you can just imagine it was all cla collapsed and all the little mm -hmm. you know what was a beautiful cage was now on top of itself and I laughed I mean I yeah. thought that was pretty clever so <laughs> I thought well there I just shot my chances because yeah. um, the guy beside of me did mm -hmm. um, chamomile tea napoleons and oh. The other person on the other side of him made these gorgeous unicorn macarons. Oh. The unicorns were actually in clouds. I mean, it was Whoa. phenomenal. I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> and so, but I was okay with it. And so mm -hmm. we went into the green room so that they could make their decision. Mm -hmm. And the two of them were high-fiving each other. And he was the faker and she was the baker. So yeah. they had already eliminated a baker. And I just That's stood so there funny. and they're complimenting each other. You know, yours was awesome. Well, yours was more awesome, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just kind of standing to yeah. the side. And, and But I was okay. I was like, you know, I collapsed the caramel cage. You know, I didn't get it up to the proper temperature. Mm -hmm. And then we three had to walk out. And they did their judgments and whatever. And then they chose me as the winner. Ah! And I'm like, oh, my God. The country girl wins. That's oh my amazing. gosh, the underdog rose to the top. It went like that. So, so. how did they decide? What did they say? Like my flavors. Oh. My flavors. Because even if the structure fell down, it just tasted the it best. It tasted so awesome. Mm. Yeah. Well, then they. Uh, I remember with him, with the with the other home baker. They mm -hmm. said that he did not use enough of the chamomile tea to actually get the flavor to come through. Oh. So even though he had these gorgeous Napoleons, mm -hmm. his flavor wasn't there. Wow. Which again reinforces how important flavor is. Yeah. And it's then true. Um, I don't remember something about hers was off mm -hmm. as well. I don't remember again the flavor. Unicorns. The beautiful unicorns. Wow. But um, yeah, my flavor it might have collapsed, but the flavor was there. That's amazing. So, and I have never made that cake again. It's well, like the memory is there. Why right? mess it's, with it? Right. It can't get better than no. being a winner. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And so, what a way to get your name too. Yeah. On TV. And I never gave it another thought until I was talking with, um, well, my publicist's name is Caroline. Mm -hmm. And so um, when we met last year, we met at the um, Burgoo Festival or the Burgoo Ooh, Competition. Yeah. And um, she, so she was like, you know, do you have, you know, let, let's talk about, you know, your wins because I love to compete. I love mm -hmm. competition. I love writing recipes. Yeah, so that I was love a any of that. thing for you so, to do. I told her that story because mm -hmm. it's so funny and, you know, it's a good story. And she smacked the table at Auntie's <laughs> Coffee and she went, the flavor queen, that's what you are. Right? And and then I shrunk back from it. I'm oh. like, oh, I can't possibly, you know, I'm Janine Washley and I'm a serious cook and mm. I'm, you know, a historian and I'm, you know, I can't possibly be something kitschy like the flavor queen. Mm. But I didn't say that to her. I just thought that. kitschy in the kitchen? Not kitschy oh. in the kitchen. Oh, well. And so I, um... 
I thought, okay, she'll learn how serious I am. You know, oh. that I'm intense and serious about what I, I do. I love that you thought you were going to calm Caroline down. Oh, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> funny and again I did not know her right and she is intense and I love her so much she's good she is mm-hmm. awesome and so she's the reason you're here she absolutely me, I so. mean I can't um say enough good things about her because it I mean just everything to get me to the next level so mm-hmm. that I can be um not only creative not only get um you know, just uh, more people in tune with delicious flavors and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I never would have been able to do that without her help. So she absolutely mm-hmm. deserves the praise and the oh, credit there. Definitely. Um, but she's she, so good at connecting. But people. it was still fun to mm-hmm. think that I could, you know, just kind of sway her off of that. And so she, she, you know, was telling everybody the flavor queen, the flavor. Mm-hmm. And I would be kind of like, oh my gosh, will she stop please oh. saying that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then finally I started kind of mm-hmm. acquiescing towards it. And thinking, you know, it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I am all about flavor and I, and people do tell me that and I do enjoy, you know, learning combinations and that sort of thing. So, so I started convincing myself that the flavor queen was not so bad. You had to get past that imposter syndrome. Yeah. Of sounding pretentious. If I call myself the queen of something, am I putting other people down or whatever? Rosa, that is such an important point because Mm -hmm. we as women... Mm -hmm. I believe are um, very prone to doing that. Yeah. You know, very prone to doing that. You're either a mean girl and you want to be the queen mm-hmm. bee or whatever. Yeah. Or, or you're so afraid to assert yourself. Yes, I was because afraid you don't of success. want to come across that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's like, you know, success scared me, you know, mm-hmm. being, you know, owning what I already, you know, am. And, and that's not arrogant. That's yeah. just, you know, I love studying about flavor and history and cooking. And, yeah. and it's not, um, I never have to explain it, but I, mm-hmm. in my mind, just because I felt like I needed to have an explanation. So I had mm-hmm. the explanation in yes. my head. I'm like flavor. And it's kind of a good explanation. Flavor isn't just about food and how it tastes. Flavor is your attitude. Flavor is the atmosphere. Flavor is mm. style. And then um, queen, we're all queens. We're all, <laughs> we, you know, you're knowledgeable about the food scene, about podcasting and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. You know, I'm, you know, a queen and, you know, my, my realm, so to speak. You really are. And I the, mean, I got to witness and taste your grandeur at oh, the Sip and Soul. <laughs> so at Kobe had this phone raiser called Sip and Soul where there's all this bourbon. And let me tell mm-hmm. you, at those bourbon events, you need to have some substantial food. Yes. If you're going to be tasting all these things. You're right. And so you had prepared this huge spread. It was like two tables long and it was like a charcuterie board that incorporated uh-huh. sandwiches and it was like art and everybody was like afraid to start eating it at the beginning. I wonder. Because it was so beautiful they didn't want to mess it oh. up. But don't worry. I mean, it, you got a couple drinks before you even got that far. Yeah. So it didn't take too long. But <laughs> I will funny. say the first reaction was everybody was like, get the pictures first for real. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that. Yeah, oh my goodness. Because that's how I saw it. I, you know, I had, there were candy canes. Um, mm-hmm. I had made those out of like uh, salami yeah. and um, it was Genoa salami and um, maybe was it provolone. S- yeah, some kind of cheese. something like that. Mm-hmm. And the candy canes crisscrossed. Mm-hmm. And then there was, was so a, what I was thinking of like a Della Robbia wreath mm. and which is typically traditionally like sugared fruit. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, I'll take um, you know, like the broccoli and the cauliflower and all of that, and I'll arrange it like a Della Robbia, and Ooh. then I'll work in, you know, some other like dried fruits and nuts and that sort mm-hmm. of thing. And it did; it looked like a wreath. And mm-hmm. then, and so I and I, you made macaron Christmas trees too. I did. On the other table. That's right, yeah. the macaron Christmas trees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in that beautiful. other area. My that husband was... was the first to oh. desecrate that. Oh, I love it! <laughs> but we got Yay. it on camera. <laughs> I didn't get it on camera. Oh, that is so funny. Oh yeah. So so that was so much fun um, to put together, and those were called grazing tables. Mm-hmm. So it was the charcuterie element, mm-hmm. but there. In, when I prepare a grazing table, um, you know, of course, I put down a cloth, mm-hmm. and then I put down. A, well, I use um, the that uh, plastic wrap that when you press it, it mm-hmm. seals, oh. so it protects the table, Good. you know, the table surf, mm-hmm. the tablecloth surface, and then um, I go and I set out 
the boards because I make those the charcuterie boards. Mm-hmm. I make those ahead of time, oh, okay. and so that then I place those, okay. and then I can move them if I need to. So they're on um, something that's you know movable, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. And then I come through with nuts and crackers and mm-hmm. you know the dry things to fill and, in the gaps. Yes, to mm-hmm. hide the um, the edges. Mm-hmm. Now and then there are going to be some like tough corners mm-hmm. that you know just aren't going to you know take. To crackers and nuts and that mm-hmm. sort of thing and that's where the herbs come in and that's oh, where the fresh yeah. herbs which of course rosemary looks so beautiful exactly. looks like pine at More christmas greenery. time yeah. oh yeah and then you just hide the edges like that and then all of a sudden the table just kind of made itself because mm-hmm. you think kind of organically yeah um and like i was it's a so, living thing oh, yeah I love that. and i so i was really proud of that i, I was you hoping that everyone enjoyed it enjoyed it and for plus sure. i was trying to think of what goes well with bourbon you know at mm-hmm. a bourbon event now i knew that there were going to be some other delicious cocktails mm-hmm. so um yeah so you know i thought salty you know that's just Savory, so oh yeah. yeah the apricots with, things that um, can soak it up oh. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, that you can absolutely. be savor <laughs> yes and you know and complement and enhance you know exactly. some of the um you know delicious drinks so yeah mm-hmm. that was super fun as you can tell I was very excited about that <laughs> well yeah. I, and that's who needs to be doing stuff like this people who care about it and mm-hmm. enjoy it it's a oh, joy yeah. for you like I could just see your eyes lighting up as you're talking oh, yeah. about this event that you got to cater it's not like you carried a tray in there you got no. to create art yes and yeah. I love meeting chefs who are artists oh you thank know? you I, yeah it's really really fun and um you had this as part of your catering business, mm-hmm. right? Yes. But you've started doing TV spots here locally mm-hmm. on a regular basis, right? Oh, yes. When can people yeah. see you there? Oh, gracious. Tune in on Fridays. Um, it's Wave Country with Don G. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I present a recipe like in January, January's national soup month. So we okay. played that up. Of course, we all make some sort of resolution. Even those of us who don't make <laughs> resolutions, we kind of think, you know, this year's going to be different and we set goals or something like that. Yeah. So, um, it's also kind of a gloomy month. And, mm. uh, so the first recipe was a healthy, it was a healthy soup recipe. Mm-hmm. And then, um, the second recipe of the new year was a hunter style mushroom and, uh, beef, uh, ragu sauce wow, you know, for, for over yummy. grits. So instead mm-hmm. of putting it on pasta, we did it on grits. Um, mm-hmm. and the reason for that is mushrooms actually absorb sunlight, which they then convert into vitamin D. Mm-hmm. So when it's what? gloomy outside and that sort of thing, you know, some people, um, they suffer from SAD, you know, that mm-hmm. seasonal affective disorder yeah. where they aren't getting enough sunshine. So, um, yeah, the mushrooms have natural, it's a natural source of vitamin D. That's fantastic. So, I need more mushrooms in my life. Yes. Yes. And so this was a delicious, flavorful way to get those mushrooms. And it's also a healthy little hack. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're trying to maybe get away from so much beef and that sort of thing, take about 50% of it and make it, um, mushrooms, you know, just pulse it in a food processor until it's about the same size as ground beef. Yeah. And And then then you you have the flavor of the beef, but you temper it with the mushrooms. Exactly. Because mushrooms are like little sponges and they will absorb the flavor of the beef and it's really difficult to tell they oxidize as well so if you get your textures right it's very difficult to tell that that's what's going on and then you put your spices in there your herbs your seasonings and unless someone was watching you make that dish Mm -hmm. they'd have no idea no no wow that is genius so you went through all that on the show Mm mm-hmm yeah, that is fantastic. Yeah, so we do that. We walk through it, mm-hmm. and um, it's so much fun to watch that on Fridays because if Dawn doesn't like something that I'm doing, Uh-oh. she's vocal about it, Uh-oh. but I just fire right back. And she knows <laughs> I love history, and mm-hmm. um, so I'll throw in, hey, did you, well, the whole thing about SAD, you know, about yeah. seasonal affective disorder. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what? And so, Was yeah, there so we talk about it. anything that you made? And then she was like, oh, I'm not, I don't want to eat that. Well, she doesn't particularly like spicy food, so oh, yeah, she she typically, you know, mm-hmm. just doesn't try that. Mm-hmm. So, um, but other than that, mm-hmm. um, now that she's confident with me because <laughs> I've been, I've been there almost a year on Fridays, mm-hmm. um, she will try just about everything. Good. Yeah. So it's, it's been good, but that whole rapport, that whole, um, like I was talking about necks, um, chicken necks, we, um, I did oh, a, yeah. uh, a simple chicken soup and explained why 
just this past Friday, mm -hmm. why um, chicken soup makes you feel better when you have the flu or, you know, you're just under the weather. So why so, is that? Well, okay, the celery actually is a natural source of sodium, mm -hmm. and then carrots, um, it, it's just a naturally sweet vegetable. Mm -hmm. um, and that uh, is kind of like you're getting your electrolytes, you're getting sodium, you're getting, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like an energy drink almost yeah. is how I explained yeah. it, you know, where um, uh, your body's depleted when you're not feeling well, mm -hmm. you know, you've been coughing and sneezing and, and all of that, and maybe you're not eating right. Yeah. So it's important to get that sodium in because um, sometimes we get that sick headache. Mm -hmm. A lot of times that's because sure. we're out of balance. Plus, um, you're probably dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So the broth, and then I explained um, chicken broth mm -hmm. and how to make um, delicious homemade chicken broth in under an hour in an instant pot. Oh, those instant so, pots. I was like, oh, yeah. pots take forever to they make bone do. broth. Okay. They do. And I have this method where I, I do make bone broth. So mm -hmm. the first time I cook it for 30 minutes, the chicken, um, basically you just take your chicken, whichever uh, size of chicken fits into whatever size instant pot that you have. And there's mm -hmm. lots of different varieties out on the market right now. Yeah. <laughs> and you put that in there with eight cups of water. Okay. And then um, I, I use the manual function all the time. So um, I just hit manual 30 minutes um, after 30, and then I let it naturally come down. I, mm. you know, I don't quick release it. Mm -hmm. And then um, I get, you know, once all of that's done, um, I remove the breast meat, mm -hmm. put that on a plate, stick that in the refrigerator, and then um, and, and pour the broth off, and it's a beautiful golden color. So mm -hmm. then I'm left with all of the other parts. You know, so we've got the bones, the cartilage, we've got all of the dark meat, you know, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. I leave that in the Instant Pot, add about six cups of water, do it all over again, manual, 30 minutes, and then let it naturally release and it pulls all the flavor out of the bones. I mean, wow. it is the best bone broth. Once it cools down, mm -hmm. you know, how bone broth um, just oh, becomes yeah. very um, gelatin-like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this looks like a bowl full of jello. I yeah. mean, all the good stuff is out of it, but it's a beautiful golden color, mm -hmm. and you've, you've, you know, had a $10 chicken, and mm -hmm. I got every possible bit of nutrients out of that. Including the neck, but not the giblets. Yes, that right? that's right. <laughs> yeah, my, my Oma, I'm German, and my Oma used to always say, now, Nini, my nickname is Nini. She's like, you save the neck for you. You taste oh, it. And she said, it's not only, you know, a cook's treat, but you can also tell if you need to re-season anything, you know, if you need a little bit more salt at the end or whatever. Ooh. She goes, but that's for you. And so I've always remembered that. <laughs> and when I told Don G that, she was like, that neck, you eat that neck. And I'm like, it's delicious. <laughs> and she was just cracking up. It's for, just like so, the rest of it. Well, that is... That is interesting. Yeah, those cooks, they, they don't want people taking their necks. Oh, no. And it's they like their treat. Yeah. And even think about, you know, when you're baking cookies, mm -hmm. you know, when you're baking cookies, you've got all your cookies, you've probably pressed it, stamped out all of your cookies. And then there's that one sad little ball oh, of dough. Yeah. I never throw that away. No. I always make, um, <laughs> I always make um, in German, a snail is called um, a schinken. And I always take that and I roll it out and uh -huh. I make a little snail. And I'm always thinking about my family my oh grandmother, my, my great-grandmother, my mom, you know, so I'm like, oh, I'll make me a little shinken, and I'll put that on there, and then that little snail, you know, mm -hmm. it, 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 uh, it's That's not like I get, treat. It's my treat. It's the oh baker's my treat. Gosh, yeah, Janine, I'm that is waste. literally the sweetest thing. <laughs> I can't handle it. I mean, yeah. I have to do that. You will. Oh my yeah, gosh. just make something and then you just know when it bakes. That's my little treat right there. Well, yeah. Then I'll think of you, Nene. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that is Excellent. so cute. So um, I'm going to have to start tuning in when I can. Usually I'm yeah. probably going to be at work, but at the same time, if there's a time I can tune in, I don't want to miss out on hearing you and Don G going back and forth because so she's fun. a great, I love her. And then um, there's a channel in Bowling Green. Um, it's WBKO, and mm -hmm. every other Tuesday I'm down there. Really? And the recipes are typically different. I mean, sometimes there's a repeat just because it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But or it was so awesome, you don't want Bowling Green to be deprived. You got it. <laughs> yes. And um, so that is, uh, uh, that's a lot of fun. The, it's a completely, it's a two o'clock crowd. Mm -hmm. No. Well, mm -hmm. I always have to take a minute to pause because it's central time down there. That's true. So I mm -hmm. have to, we we'll hour ahead. Yeah. So it's 12 o'clock. It's our 12 o'clock um, down there. 
So I have to be there at 1030 and we start at 11. So okay. yeah, 11 central time. So that would be gotcha. our 12 o'clock. Yeah. So, um, and that's a lot of fun. They're uh, just a bunch of good people down there as well. Oh, yeah. So totally fun. I didn't know anything about Bowling Green. I was so <laughs> nervous. I'm like, Aww. oh my gosh. Okay. I, I use the Waze app, yeah, you know, yeah. and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing or where I'm going. Oh my mm-hmm. goodness. And now I, 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 I thought, you know what? I'm not walking down here scared or riding down here scared anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take it as an adventure. So exactly. I'll go and I'll um, look up some foodie stuff. Yes. And then, um, for example, there's a kombucha that's made in Bowling Green. Oh, it wow. is awesome. The flavors are out of this world. Well, um, and they need to be sanctioned by the flavor <laughs> queen. So, hey, oh yes. <laughs> so, but I am, I, you know, this is kind of like a, just a little tease here on mm-hmm. the podcast. I'm going to contact them, um, and see if I can sell their product oh. at, uh, the flavor queen's kitchen, which is yes. what I'm, um, creating in Clarkson right now. Yeah. That's so what that we need be... to talk about. The flavor yeah. queen's kitchen. You're not just the catering. You also are going to have mm-hmm. a brick and mortar that you are opening up here soon in February, right? It is. Now, um, a little backstory, mm-hmm. um, the, the restaurant, the, the restaurant, that particular building was built in the 50s, and mm-hmm. it was called the City Cafe. So, the, in Clarkson, right there across from the bank. And Clarkson is so small. I mean, if it, it's got... Is this it Clarkson, truly, Kentucky? It's Clarkson, Kentucky, okay. home of the State Be- uh, Honey Festival. The State Honey Festival. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And um, uh, there's one stoplight. <laughs> so literally. It, it literally has one stoplight. And Are you going to be at that stoplight? No. Oh, okay. No. You come up about 500 yards, okay. and there I am. <laughs> gotcha. So, um, so anyway, so that was the City Cafe. And then um, in another location, there was a restaurant called K's Cafe, K apostrophe S Cafe, mm-hmm. and catering. And she, when those folks retired there with um, City Cafe, she mm-hmm. moved the business in there. So Kay's Cafe mm. and Catering um, was in the area over 25 years. Oh, wow. So I bought that from the retiring owner in mm. 2019, the end of 2019. And you've been running it under that name? At Kay's Cafe, yes. Okay. And um, I have the dubious distinction of having bought the restaurant, and then in March of 2020, the world shut down. Oh, so. of course you caused that. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, you know, I'm always the one who wants to take the lemons and turn them into lemonade. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to remodel. And I, it hurt me to have to let people go, but I had to let people go, but I kept the core staff because, Mm -hmm. you know, I've had three months or so to determine who was Mm -hmm. essential. Mm -hmm. And so I kept the core staff. I was able to get a PPP loan. I was able to pay the, you know, their, um, uh, paychecks and that mm-hmm. sort of thing through that program, which was a godsend yeah. for me. And, um, yeah, so, um, we came out on the other side and it was, um, it was a good thing. So we painted and, you know, just did all, all of this, you know, changing and just making it brighter. And yeah, I can't wait to see it. So, I, I didn't see the old one, but I can't yeah. wait to see the new one. So now, um, with the whole flavor queen thing and I just, mm-hmm. um, you know, again, Caroline is that creative genius. You know, I hear I was stepping back going, I can't possibly. And then I've fully embraced it now. And it's like, I want the world to see my flavor combinations. I want not just Clarkson to see it. I want everybody to be able to experience fresh food, you know, Mm -hmm. delicious flavor combinations, um, quirky at times, Mm -hmm. but delicious. Mm -hmm. And so never kitschy, never, (laughs) (laughs) definitely quirky, but maybe not kitschy. And so the interior is going to be a beautiful deep teal color Mm. and then um you know fresh potted plants everywhere Mm -hmm. and it's just going to be freshness you walk in and i just want everybody to just kind of stand in the doorway and breathe in all of the good aromas Mm. that are going to greet you and the menu is very different because Kay's cafe Mm -hmm. i basically kept the old menu oh okay Um, so you were really just perpetuating what was already established you i could Mm -hmm. not have said it better and i did that I did that for a reason because Mm -hmm. I was new, no one knew me Mm -hmm. and, um, everyone was scared Mm -hmm. after COVID, you know, what, you know, what's going to be out there, you know, they they needed that comfort. They needed that reassurance. And for that reason, I really did, you know, even though I brightened up the restaurant and didn't Mm -hmm. look like, you know, the space that they were used to, Mm -hmm. the food was very, let's face it. The food was what they were Mm -hmm. 
remembering. Yes. And um, I, now I'm not being morbid or anything like that, but they had a very old clientele. Mm-hmm. Very, I mean, were, they were elderly. Yeah. And they've been going there for years, yes. right? What'd you say, 20 or 30 years? 25 years, yeah. yeah. Wow. And um, I hate to say it, but, you know, just about all of them have passed away. Oh, and I started thinking about that, you know, after I read another obituary, mm-hmm. and it's like, for crying out loud, mm-hmm. everyone who was supporting Kay's Cafe mm-hmm. is pretty much gone. Wow. And I thought, you know, I really, you know, the whole goal has been to attract new people, mm-hmm. um, new clients, younger, younger mm-hmm. client, you know, younger customers and that sort of thing. And I'm going to have to change this menu. So this mm-hmm. whole Flavor Queen thing, even though it's fun and I'm, you know, laughing and joking mm-hmm. about it, there was a very serious reason why it needed to happen. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it it needed to reflect our current eating trends, yeah. you know, salads, um, lower fat, mm-hmm. not so much fried, mm-hmm. um, grilled, you know. Mm-hmm that sort of, you know, flavor profile. And making healthy foods taste good. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Not so many carbs, you know, mm-hmm. so that's what you're going to find. I really respect any chef who can make a vegetable taste good. <laughs> and I always give them immense credit. And, you know, so, so mm-hmm. many people are like, oh, I like vegetables. It's not that hard. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'm pickier. So yeah. I really appreciate it. Yes. Like, I got to have, I'm sorry, I'm going to mention somebody that's no, not please. you, but that's, I just went to I know, brunch I at the House of Marigold and had oh, their beet yes. salad. Have you How had How was it? it? I have not had it. Oh, my I love gosh. beets, though. They made beets taste so good. Oh, my so gracious. So there was red beets on one side okay. and golden beets on the other. Oh, and yum. then all this, like, greenery underneath. And uh-huh. I guess arugula, but it's some kind of mi- green mix. And then yeah. um, there's some kind of, like, seeds and goat cheese. And oh, wonderful. some kind of vinaigrette on it. I was in yeah. deep conversation with somebody. So yes. I really wasn't overthinking what was in it, except that I was so impressed with the beets and I couldn't yeah. eat it all because it was so huge like I added shrimp on for mm-hmm. protein but um were the I beets raw or were the beets cooked they were some they were cooked they were cooked they were cooked yeah. but it, I don't think they were pickled but they were very mm-hmm. tender that's awesome. Yeah. Now, raw beets are delicious too. So, and it's a completely different flavor profile when it you get really a crunch. Yeah. So, it was I was curious. At all. It was almost gelatinous. Oh, wow. Yeah. I wonder if they did it in a sous vide. If you do it oh, in a I sous wonder. vide, I mean, it's like every, like vegetables become mm-hmm. silky. Maybe. So, I'll have to study that. I'll That's have to a really make expensive, some phone calls. That's a really expensive device, isn't it? The well, sous-vide? it's be getting, it's, be, it's becoming more and more affordable. And there because are a lot of. It's becoming mainstream. So many people are buying it. You so got they, produced more oh yeah of them. okay yeah and uh um it, it's um not necessarily used for everything mm-hmm. however chefs will pick something like vegetables mm-hmm. um uh, like a dessert element like apples become mm-hmm. like silk so you wow. you know make an apple topping for mm-hmm. let's say like maybe a caramel cheesecake mm-hmm. and then the apples are like silk and then you've got you know just a different texture with yeah. the cheesecake and then of course you know the the crust is going to be a little bit crunchier a little bit crumblier mm-hmm. so again i am the flavor queen but i am also like a texture junkie right. i love texture and there's such a huge difference like my husband is trying he will try to convince me that there's no difference between like the quiche that you make in the little cupcake pan and the sous vide eggs like that you would get somewhere else and oh. i was like this is a huge difference <laughs> there really this is, is not the same thing at all no um, no 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 but you know that he's not picky at all uh-huh. and that's probably why you can't tell the difference yeah so he's like you just went and spoiled yourself no. and now you made it harder <laughs> No, I think, I I think when we study food, Mm -hmm. when we study food, we're kind of like children in the beginning, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, we're not thinking on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. We're not thinking on a deeper level, but as we educate ourselves, as we study, you know, those finer points of texture, of flavor, of consistencies, Mm -hmm. you know, we can talk about silky and soft and gelatinous Mm -hmm. and somebody like maybe your husband or, Mm -hmm. or someone who's not that into food, they're like, all of those are the same thing. Why are you talking about, in three different words? It's yeah. all the same thing. Yeah. It's all squishy. It's and all it's squishy. Like, <laughs> well, and it's they like, probably all would fit under that category. Well, that's yeah, true. that's definitely. But but no, each one of those there's there are subtleties. Yeah. It's kind of like when you study wine. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a, a or wine bourbon. or bourbon. <laughs> yeah, there's a progression. There's a palate progression, and that happens in food and flavor as well, yeah. and texture for that matter. 
goodness, I don't want to smear anybody. No, you can't. But, no, like, we're talking okay. good about everybody. Right. I, yeah. I have always loved the chicken gnocchi soup at Olive Garden. Right? Okay. Yeah. And I went so long throughout the pandemic not having COVID and not losing my taste and smell and all this time. Yeah. We went to Olive Garden because my son was wanting those breadsticks, you know, because mm-hmm. we yeah. love those breadsticks. And um, I got the chicken gnocchi soup and I was like, Richard, I think I might have COVID. I can't oh. taste it at all. And he tasted it and he was like, it's the same as it always has been. And I oh, was no. like, uh, and I, I, so I was trying different things to yeah. see if I could taste or smell it. And I could taste and smell everything. He was like, you've just gotten too picky. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> no. No, I that's... don't want to make myself not enjoy things I did before. <laughs> that defeats the purpose. That is so but, funny. But it's just wild how your taste can change. Yes. Right? Now, I love ice cream. I love, um, I mean, I love ice cream. So I'm going to, mm-hmm. you know, just play on what you just said. Mm-hmm. But I'm a Dairy Queen girl. I mean, I okay. grew up in Virginia. Mm-hmm. I mean, my mom came over with us from Germany, mm-hmm. but we grew up in Virginia. And there was a Dairy Queen in the very small town that we had. And to this day... Once a summer or Mm -hmm. one time during the summer, I sneak Mm -hmm. off to a Dairy Queen (laughs) and I have a chocolate dip cone by myself in the parking lot. And I just love that. You know, I mean, that is, you know, anybody who's an ice cream aficionado would be Mm -hmm. like, what (laughs) is she talking about? But I can go to Louisville Mm -hmm. Cream and enjoy those amazing flavors there as Mm -hmm. well. But I can equally enjoy that Dairy Queen cone. And I'm telling you, Dairy Queen vanilla. that makes you feel the joy of your childhood, too. Absolutely. And that's memories. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, we could talk about that, how important memories are. You Mm -hmm. um, You know, culinary memories are very important yeah. like when, you kept the menu for the, all those people who needed yes, that comfort yes those, exactly that remembering that solidity that stability in their life yes when there was a time of no stability for anything that is a really good point yes and even think about when um, you went off to college and you were homesick you probably went and sought something that your mom made or maybe mm-hmm. when you came back home for the first time and you know our moms will go well honey what do you want you know, me to make for you. And mm-hmm. we all have that one thing, you know, that only mom can make so perfectly, mm-hmm. but it's those memories that we associate with that. Yeah. Like my so. grandma would make this jello cheesecake out of the box, you know, but yeah. put lemon juice in it Ooh. and nobody else would do that. And yeah. she didn't measure it. So I couldn't replicate it or anything, <laughs> <laughs> but I could get cheesecake anywhere and it wasn't going to taste like that. Yeah, you know? exactly. So it could be simple and not like, you know, gourmet or anything oh, but it's still yeah. so like encapsulates that memory of oh, happiness yeah. like my um grandma used to take me every year on my birthday I would go shopping with her at the mall and she would buy me a new outfit yes and we would go to the Chick-fil-A that was in the mall that was the only one in mm-hmm. town was in the mall at oh, the time uh-huh. so the only time I had Chick-fil-A was on my birthday yes and I had the Nuggets and Polynesian sauce. So to this day, anytime I have nuggets and Polynesian sauce, I feel like it's my birthday. I love that. That (laughs) is awesome. Yes, that's awesome. And for me, it's the cheesecake. My mom always Mm. made a cheesecake for my birthday. What was that like? Oh, was it baked and stuff? Oh, oh yes. Mm-hmm. My mom is a wonderful cook. Mm-hmm. Um, she's an she's very artistic and just um, a tremendous force in the kitchen. And I was actually very intimidated by her because oh, really? she is so good. I mean, they uh, there's an old saying: you're either a baker or you're mm-hmm. a cook. Exactly. And not many people can bridge the gap between that. But mom mm-hmm. definitely bridges that gap. And her cheesecakes um, are phenomenal. I mean, they're you know tall, beautiful mm-hmm. works of art you know and she thinks about flavor and all of that so she makes them in all different flavors not just like a plain cheesecake that's right yeah no, not just a plain okay. cheesecake. And so when she Does saw... Does she have as many flavors as Big Nita's cheesecakes? No. No, not, <laughs> not as... Oh, Big Nita's. Oh, my oh, gosh. No, amazing. no. Not at all. But uh, no one can touch that. Um, but mom, yeah. she. So then the, um, when she saw that I love cheese, cheesecake, mm-hmm. because my brother had um, his cake, and my sister loved Mississippi. Mom made a Mississippi mud cake for mm. her. And then... 
So when mom caught on that it was cheesecake for me, every year I'd get a cheesecake. And sometimes it would be like a ricotta cheesecake mm -hmm. and she would make yeah. that. So um, if I get it, if I see ricotta cheesecake on a menu, I've got to get it because like you said, mm -hmm. it makes me feel like it's my birthday. It's and precious. mom put that lemon zest into yes. the cheesecake. So you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Oh, get I do. And mom loved a New York style cheesecake. Yes. So she was always trying to create the perfect one, the height, mm. the, you know, just everything the about that. Oh yeah. But she, she always like overdid it with the lemon zest, oh. but that's okay. I love it because to me, that's mom's, you <laughs> Did know, Did that make touch. it less New York style? Is oh that, yeah. It made it mom's. It, yeah. yeah. It totally made it mom's. Have you had Neuf Chateau cheesecake? I have. I used to make did, that all the time. Did you? Yes. Now. Did your mom make it? Um, I'm pretty sure. Mm, I'm not, not exactly sure. She sure. had the cheese for it. Right. Yeah. Um, but I know that was in our refrigerator, but I don't know that she, I'm pretty oh. sure that she did. Yeah. I'm pretty sure because Girl, um, we talked about that. you were living your best life with all these cheesecakes. Oh my goodness. I just, mm. yeah, I loved it. And even today I was talking about, um, well, I was talking to Caroline and mm -hmm. um, I said, ooh, you know what? Well, I told her that uh, at the mm -hmm. Flavor Queen's Kitchen, uh -huh. we're going to have cheesecake specials. Because Are no you one have Neuf Chateau cheesecake. But you know what? Oh my I've, gosh. I've, 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 I've just tucked that. I've tucked that nugget into <gasps> the back of my head. Because yes. my birthday's in October. Oh, by the way. really? Uh, okay. If you need to know, because yeah. um, the first time I had it was actually at Brazeros on Fourth Street Live. Really? Yes. And, and what? I would go back to Brazeros just for that cheesecake. Are you serious? I am a hundred. I'm dead. Did serious. they have sauces with it? Did they do they sauces did, or anything like that? But it didn't need it. And yeah. I think I had some of it. I was like, oh. don't get in the way of this. And I was like, what is this that's so special? So then I had to read like this yeah. whole essay about Neufstel cheese and how it's like made at a higher altitude from cows yeah. who always lived at this higher altitude in like Switzerland or something. That is so funny. And it's just so light and yeah. airy, but rich, but not dense. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so that's, good. um, it is, it's like eating a cloud. It is. It really is. It is the unicorns, macarons. That's they look like a cloud, but this one tastes <laughs> like a cloud. It's, that is oh. a really good. You know what? I'm tucking that nugget away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to make me a unicorn flowy cheesecake? Oh, <laughs> a Neuf Chateau cheesecake yeah. in the shape of a unicorn. Oh, no, that that would be a cloud, so a cloud. A cloud. Yes, I love it. It has to wow. be a Neuf Chateau cloud, though. It does. Yeah, absolutely. I love how much we are on the same page. That's why yeah. I love doing these interviews mm -hmm. because I just love meeting people and getting to know their story oh. and getting to know you as a person. We've never so, met before. Never. I mean, I follow you on Facebook, mm -hmm. and that's it. I've and been look following at you since that Kobe event, Zip and Soul, because <laughs> I'm. I'm like this woman knows what's up with food. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, well, thank you for coming out to my recording studio. Oh, I on loved a week it. Night. Oh, no problem, yeah. no problem at all. Um, it's always fun to you know to just kind of break away from everybody. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, guys, you all keep on working, keep on painting, keep mm -hmm. on trying these recipes, you know, that sort of thing. I got to slip away to a podcast, <laughs> and then I get in the car, turn on my music, mm -hmm. and you know, off I go. So when is your Flavor Queen Kitchen opening? Well, we're having a Valentine's dinner on February the 10th. Okay. It's reservation only, so just call um, 270-242-9904. That's the old K's Cafe number. It's okay. still in operation. Okay. It will be for about another week and a half. Okay. And we're doing a surf or turf mm -hmm. um, menu. Okay. And I haven't quite... I've almost nailed down the dessert, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to either be raspberry or chocolate mousse, mm -hmm. and then oh. I'm going to actually make chocolate bowls, so. Bowls out of chocolate? Yes. Like, yes. like hardened chocolate? Uh-huh. Yes. <gasps> Girl, so, you're like yeah. that chocolate tear guy who I makes all, like, it. the chandeliers out of chocolate oh. and stuff. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I, I do. I I'm, I'm, oh. can't say I'm that fancy, because. Oh, well, you <laughs> might make me feel that fancy if I come over there. That is wow. awesome. Yeah. So, uh, okay. so we were talking about pavlovas, but I don't want to make pavlovas. Mm. And I said, you know what? This this will catch everyone's fancy, mm -hmm. you know, to get, you know, kind of like mm -hmm. that was so popular in the eighties to do the chocolate bowls and was whatever, it? Oh. and so it's kind of retro and and fun and kitschy. See, and it would, know, be that would be new kitschy. and novel to me because <laughs> I don't have that memory. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I do. I I used to read my mom's you know gourmet magazines and so forth, oh. and I would see all these fancy shapes, and it just stuck with me. And then mom used to make chocolate leaves, so I just Girl, you know your she mom. would. 
was uptown. She really, she still is. Did she just like oh my study this in her kitchen from books back then? Did well, she go to culinary school? No, no, not at all. But mom, you know, having grown up in Germany and she traveled Europe extensively, mm-hmm. you know, she just saw stuff. And then she's, you know, such a, she's just a natural baking talent. Mm-hmm. So she probably saw it in a magazine and we had a holly tree out back and she went and got some holly leaves and you know, washed them and then painted chocolate on them. And I just remember her peeling the leaf away and there's this gorgeous chocolate leaf with all the veining and everything. I mean, it was amazing. And so, yeah, so I'm not scared to work with chocolate because my mom did this in a kitchen in the country in Virginia. So, yeah, so mom totally debunked the whole myth and mystique of chocolate for me. (laughs) (laughs) That's incredible. Oh, what a gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she totally awesome. intimidated the fire out of you. Otherwise, because she so. was so <laughs> because her everything just looked so perfect. Mm. Like gingerbread houses, mom would make the patterns for gingerbread houses, and Rosa, I'm not kidding you, they were tall. I mean, these gingerbread houses were almost three feet tall. Oh she made Victorian homes and that sort of thing. <gasps> I've seen those. It's, mom, that's yeah, mom did that kind of thing. So wow. yeah, so I was pretty intimidated. So I thought when I moved out, you know how we all just have to fly the nest. Mm-hmm. At some point, I thought, you know, I'm going to go down the Southern Road because mom never quite got Southern cooking. Mm. And that built my confidence. And then mom complimented me on my Southern cooking because she didn't get it. So it was kind of like, will you show me how to make this? And I'm like, if you show me how to make this. And that's, so it was just a whole new relationship with my mom in the kitchen after that. That is so sweet where you could kind of meet as equal. Yeah. Oh, that is so sweet. You just keep melting my heart. Oh my goodness. With all your precious family stories. Like chocolate. (laughs) Oh man. So how can people follow you like on social media and find you there? Yeah. Um, if you'll come out to, okay, now it gets a little bit confusing. There's the flavor queen. Mm -hmm. And that is, if you want, to learn about the cooking classes that I do at Cooking at the Cottage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be working with Mesa Collaborative over in New Albany soon. So, you know, just keep, so if you go to the Flavor Queen, you'll learn about all of that stuff. And this is on Facebook? That's on Facebook. And there's also an Instagram for it as well. Is it at the Flavor Queen? It's just, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, Flavor Queen's Queen's Kitchen, Mm -hmm. and it's apostrophe S. It's Queen's Apo- mm-hmm. It's Queen Apostrophe S. Yes. Um, on Facebook. On Facebook. And also on Instagram. Is there an apostrophe on Instagram? No, there's not on. Okay. Yeah, only the apostrophe on Facebook. Gotcha. So I have to say that. Yes. And, uh, and that is for the restaurant. So you mm-hmm. want to know the hours, if you want to know what the specials are, because mm-hmm. we're going to do monthly, weekly specials, mm-hmm. um, then come out to that for, for, for that type of information. Mm-hmm. And that's the way I'm separating it. So Good. Flavor Queen for everything else. Like catering stuff. Mm. Well, the catering is going to be under Flavor Queen's Kitchen. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we... Um, uh, we will close. We're opening at six, and we'll close at three. Okay. And then after that, you know, I'll prep my catering things, and that's, you know, that's a, okay. a nice little window. Okay. So it'll be breakfast and lunch at, in the restaurant, uh-huh. and then yes. catering for dinners. Yes. Gotcha. And then we're um, we're working towards um, once a month doing reservation only dinners. Mm-hmm. This will be like meet the producer, meet the mm-hmm. grower, meet the, um, you know. Uh, maybe meet the chef, you know, yeah. have a guest chef come down and that sort of thing. And it'll just be, you know, just really intense, mm-hmm. you know, um, delicious gourmet food. We all learn together, mm-hmm. you know, we're all eating together and it's fostering not only knowledge, but camaraderie mm-hmm. and just all of those things that People grow around. Really appreciate it. That. Yes. Mm-hmm. Things that grow around the table. You know, I just love, I just love bringing people together, people who don't think that, you know, they would have anything in common with that (laughs) next person. And then all of a sudden we start talking food. Well, look at us. We didn't really even know each other. And I feel like I've known you forever now. We just bonded over food. Yeah. (laughs) It's It's a great unifier. It really is. All right. Well, follow Janine Washley at the Flavor Queen or at the Flavor Queen Kitchen. Kitchen. Yes. You got it. (laughs) And see what she's cooking up next. Yeah. And this is the Lou Review Podcast. So, Subscribe on whatever platform you're listening so you'll be notified when there is a new episode. And I'll see you in the next one.